Thank you very much. It's a such a great honor. First of all, congratulations on the inauguration. It's so important, starting something very radical and edgy, risky, but really worth doing. So I'm very excited that uh, we really inherit the same gene from our God, Leonardo da Vinci. He's one of the best example how to really transdisciplinary, crossing over, breaking the boundary. Even they don't think about his artist, scientist, or engineer. He's everything. He can blend everything in his bodies and the mind and also the hands. That's something we really share, the really exciting passion. So art and sciences, no boundary. So uh, MIT Media, only Professor Joe Paradiso did a very nice introduction, but uh, we believe radical transdisciplinary approach, collaboration towards disruptive innovations. Always people ask, are you engineer, scientist, or designers? None of them, I'm all. That's very important mind to be Renaissance boy, girl, or uh, yeah, researchers. But uh, specifically, uh, all of us are kind of the artists, Joe Paradiso shows amazing uh, synthesizers, also Teach Mars project. So we are very much interested about inventing a media for human expression and communication and design. That is uh, one of the origin of the MIT Media Lab started from an architecture machine group. I paint, I sculpt, also I do calligraphy. As a reason, the tools extend my hands and the minds to the clay or paper is something so important. Unless you externalize your idea, you can't communicate, you can't really inspire other people. So that's a fundamental starting point to you. So one of my dreams is I want to invent new paintbrush to paint our dreams. Later I talk, for example, uh, eye brush. Also I want to invent new clay to sculpt our visions. So invention of new media of expression, then sharing with the rest of the world is something very, very important. To invent, you have to understand the material, science, technology. But the invent, who care? Then you have to have a desire to express your dream into the, uh, in the domain of the art. So let me zoom out a little bit, because all the talk of Patty Mess, Joe Paradiso, has something to do about the digital versus real physical. So Nicolas Nicolaponte made a very seminal book called Being Digital, 1995 pushing the envelope, a pendulum, towards digital domain. But then I pushed back. I joined 1995. They said, no, we are tangible. We are physical. We care materiality. Why you have to go everything pixel? But the important thing is if you zoom out, you can see the pendulum swinging in the between two real and the virtual world, or bits and atoms. So Nicolas Nicolas Ponte, also I've done some bit of the tangible stuff. But now virtual reality open reality came. So now everybody go to the uh, virtual world, immersive virtual 3D environment. Even that became an amazing uh, hype because of Metaverse, you know, 2021. And actually, ironically, Joe Paradiso and I teaching a class over the Metaverse, but a very critical point of view. And uh, then uh, I was in uh, Barcelona, I invited the conference called Puzzle X. Then Zina, she's an organizer, but she's a material scientist, bunch of the quantum computing people really believe, no, matter matters. We are made of the materials, molecule, not a pixel, or Wi-Fi, or battery. So there came a, a vision called matter bus. That's something I'm now borrowing to use to really uh, think about. So this boundary is something very, very important. In a sense, I use a metaphor of the seashore. And uh, we are still submerged into the digital world of the sea. We, are, we can't live without a, a pixel or Wi-Fi or a battery, <laughs> unfortunately. But fundamentally, I really enjoyed the amazing lunch, dinner with a colleague in an amazing environment of the city. I was also in the center of Pompidou. And that's amazing to the physical world, walking through, then selected the art, then think about the, what curator, collector really picked this one, other than that one. Also talking to my friends. So, being in the physical world and the atoms world is something fundamentally important, but we are not struggling to reconcile dual citizenship of being in a sea of the bits, but that's on the land of the atoms. So that's the whole reason we are working a lot of important design. But now, uh, like a Darth Vader, uh, dark shadow is coming, uh, basically pixel empire, now pushing us into the, uh, to dive into a deep sea, completely immersed, shut off your eyes, ears, 
even haptic sensation, you have to wear amazing stuff, not only the glove, but the entire body has to be surrounded by very, very exotic uh, haptic devices to emulate anything. And uh, I don't like it. I much prefer this uh, world of the Sorora. He's a, a Spanish painter, did an amazing job about the uh, Sororas along the seashore. Sororas. So he painted his wife and his daughter enjoying the sea breeze, then picking up the seashell, talking to each other, seeing that ice, then breathing real air, not the virtual air from, from the pipe of the deep sea diver. So it's a choice. Of course, but it's very important to think about metaphorically what is the life you really want to see. But if you really want to be immersed, you don't need to really go dive into the water. This is a great example of the aquarium, which I really admire as a designer. It's a really great, powerful world. Also, these days, a lot of the immersive Van Gogh or Frida Kaoro or Krim Turaika exhibition, that's a really great example. You don't need to dive into, but the surrounded amazing narratives, and also projection mapping into architectural space. How many people went to the immersive uh, art exhibition? You should really go, then you really see. You can still feel all the friends talking, but you can, you can completely immerse. Narrative story matters, but it doesn't require to shut off your eyes or ears. So this is just an example of a discussion. I just want the other people to become critical, rather than falling in the lab to technology blindly. So uh, this is a battle against Pixel Empire in my life in the past 30 years. So when I joined MIT Media in 1995, Pixel was the main stream. But today, even more, more, pay, more Pixel uh, world. So I tried to really uh, come up with the opposite, pushing an uh, iceberg under the waters to above the water level, meaning physical world, so people can directly grab using their hands. So that's a tangible bit. So uh, one of the best symbol is abacus. And uh, how many people can compute with abacus? Oh, oh great. <laughs> In MIT, a lot of the Asian students who used to run the abacus. But abacus is great because digit information is physically embodied as a mechanical beads, which you can touch it. Second, no black box. Uh, machine, about chip, which has auto computation or memory, but you can't really understand what's going. But Abacus, everything is exposed in a simple, transparent toy structure. This transparency, legibility, is completely lost in the current digital computer or network because of black hole. So how to bring back this simplicity of a simple physical mechanical toy is one of my uh, passion. So I'm so excited coming to Paris but also London or Tokyo, because every city has amazing historical scientific instruments museum. Have you been there? It's so beautiful because now everything gone, being replaced by the pixel simulation on the screen. But there used to be beautiful orari. This knowledge of the solar system people observed make a physical model. But the important thing is people can really grab handles, then make all the planet spin then your body is a part of the solar system. No ambiguity why four seasons exist, why eclipse happen, for example. You're part of the solar system. This engagement is completely lost in the digital one because distance, use a remote controls, mouse, keyboard, tablet, but you never be dive directly dive into that world. Also, you can see where your teachers are looking at, where your friends are pointing at. It's a real 3D collocated physical world. This gaze awareness is also very, very important. Uh, later, I'd like to show some of the uh, old examples. So let me show a few examples. Uh, this is a very early work. Uh, Dr. Jo John Dacofra did uh, for PhD. It's called App. So this system allows you to uh, put the uh, uh, object. But the shadow is computer shadow, not optical shadow. You can also change the time of the day. Then you can uh, understand inter-shadow issues. Also, you can change the material to the glass. Then you can see the reflection of the light. Then uh, you can also think about the flow of the air, Navier-Stokes equation. You, if you move the building, boundary condition changes, then you can recompute. So if you develop a city, uh, I'm in a, uh, staying in the near defense, 
amazing so many skyscraper, but how much height is appropriate for the people living, enjoying the sunlight? Those requires experimentation. I want to grab it, move it, then what happened? But the currently, all the developers show the amazing complete animation or video. We have no room that you intervene and try out what could happen. So it doesn't allow to ask question, what if? This is a landscape design tool called Sandscape. You can sculpt the sand, then you can see the vector, water drainage, computation, simulation, then color shows the speed of the water, then you can understand the erosion. So form giving to give a beautiful uh, landscape, plus also analysis together. That is a tangible. This is tangible, physical, but also computational. So this is 20 years old project, but uh, we had opportunity to rebuild because MIT Museum just opened last year. So, so many amazing historical stuff, but the most stuff is frozen, static. But our stuff is uh, dynamic, and the kids really love it. So that uh, I'm very happy. So to have a chance to come to Cambridge, please play with my sandbox. <laughs> so let me play music bottles. So these are simple empty glass bottles, but uh, having a music or a musician in it. It's a metaphor, it's like a perfume bottle or genie bottle. You just open it, then it can release the contents. They start playing. It's a very fragile glass. If you drop it, it's broken. You can't reboot it because it's a physical. The reason I this, uh, the, I design uh, this uh, system is because very personal reasons. I want to give a present to my mom. Now you can see the weather bottles. You can hear the birds singing. So that is a uh, uh, bottles I dreamed. Uh, but uh, my mom passed away in 1998. Then as a tribute, we designed. And actually, Professor Joe Paradiso helped to the design of sensors. There's several generations, but uh, how to really uh, think about people who are gone is something important topics I'm thinking. So eye brush, how many people paint every day? Every day. How many people have the kids who paint a lot? Kids are great. I think uh, we love drawing. So let me show the uh, videos. This is Dr. Kimiko Ryokai's work. And uh, she's now a tenured professor in the UC Berkeley. But uh, in the era of Renaissance, Da Vinci's era, painters were also pigment makers. If they want to have a special purple, they want they went to seashore to collect the purple seashell. They then created their own uh, ink. That's a very, very important practice. So if you go to a supermarket in Paris, so beautiful fruits, but that inspires people because you can paint something, color leaves. So how to use beauty of nature as a, like a, a inspirations. Then, you can see that the teddy bear uh, in uh, uh, yellow ink, from which this color came from. So this is a history mode. Using digital, you can do a lot of stuff. But, but uh, so what? And uh, she's an artist. She doesn't care what I said, history. <laughs> she neglected. So she came up with her own interpretation, very creative interpretation, which surprised us, but also make us very happy. So that's the best moment for interaction design, that the kids go much better than us. Also, uh, we are very interested about the computer music. As you know, Joe P is a real expert, but the computer music is great. However, from a distance, I know musician using a Macintosh or a notebook computer. You can tell, are they really playing or just hitting a record buttons? But if you go to jazz concert, trained musician interact with acoustic instruments, then sound is coming. Causality chain is very clear. What musician actually doing is clear. So lack of this kind of causality chain makes a bit uh, tough to understand. But the also great thing is uh, our team, uh, James Patti and Ben Lech present in nine. NIME is a new instrument for musical expression, which Joe 
steam also goes, and uh, uh, also Xiao Xiao, <laughs> you were there, you presented, but uh, uh, they took this idea to next level called React Table. Many professional musicians use uh, on the stage, which I'm so happy to see the uh, chain reaction of the uh, interesting stuff. Also, I love ping pong. How many people play ping pong? How many people play seriously? Okay, anyway, uh, I used to be a very serious ping pong player uh, because, uh, anyway, so now you see the, how to change the surface of architectural space into interactive space is one of my dream. So we put uh, uh, four, three microphones under each table, uh, listening uh, when ball hit. It's a sensor technology that, uh, domain that the Jopi is a world expert. But the important thing, we augmented. When you even make, if you make a mistake, ball hit the net, still water ripple entertain the audience. So that uh, it's not a zero sum game. Making your opponent make a mistake to get a point is so harsh competition, which I don't like. A bit like a professor without tenure. So, so anyway, I want to make, uh, uh, these are first social medias before Facebook, uh, Facebook or Twitter that uh, we designed. Then brought to SIGGRAPH and uh, uh, many, even center pompidos, we brought it, and then we played the ping pong. So, but the tons of it has one problem, because physical materials is frozen and very rigid. Today, we have two materials, frozen atoms, like a glass or wood or metals. Second, intangible pixel stuck behind 2D screen. You cannot do anything but remote control. You can't grab, you can't hold. So I dreamed to make a third material called radical atoms, dynamic, physical, and computational. So physically embodied pixel in our space. So it sounds very crazy. And uh, actually it's crazy, so you can't write a scientific paper, but uh, Arusel Sonica, maker of the media art, uh, liked our ideas. Then Gerwitz Stocker, the director, gave a very nice uh, subtitle, Alchemist over time. Don't paint, don't sculpt using the clay given by teacher or parents or ink from Adobe, give all the tools. Why don't you create your own materials? Then express your artistic concept using this material. So that's something very powerful statement. So we brought all the students, but let me show the one of the most uh, well-known stuff called uh, Inform. Being here and there is everybody's dream. And uh, being uh, Paris is so nice, but also I have to go back to Boston. So always you have a Zoom, which is separated completely by the screen. I can see you, I can hear you, but where you are, fundamentally you don't feel the presence. So sense of presence is something uh, very, very important topics then you can really change the shape of the hands. Also this machine, you can move all the materials. Then you can do all the kind of CAD design, but the interesting stuff is, it's not a printing. If you print, 3D print, it's a dead end. Then usually it go to landfill. But uh, you can see this multi-dimensional bar chart, still computing alive to meet the constraints. So it's live. It's not a printed the dead end stuff. Also all the mathematical equation can be manifested under like a pillow or a sofa. You can also sit, then you can deform it, but also deformation can be also measured. So these are new materials, uh, radical atoms. We love art, triptych. Uh, this is a Francis Bacon. So we try to make a, a kinetic triptych. That is called transform. This exhibition, we did a Milan Design Week 2014. Uh, but uh, really exciting because uh, Milan Design, Milan Salone is all about the furniture. Beauty of the furniture is a skin, usually static. So try, we, try, try, we try to make a collision of dynamic machines beauty, kinetic motion. So now you see all the possibility how these materials can open the door to the artist, also designer. We don't like gravity. Uh, gravity sucks because we are bound on the <laughs> floor. And uh, so we try to make anti-gravity materials. Uh, generally, and uh, let me post this, this project. So you can put this material called Zeron in the air, and it stays there, magnetic field. But also, computer knows where it is, so that computer can move it. 
Of course, a lot of limitation. However, this is conceptually very powerful. Now you can design the stuff which floating in the air, anti-gravity. So these are three body problems because we like astronomy. Also, you know, new sci-fi from uh, uh, about three body problems. But uh, how many people dance? Oh, good. More than uh, MIT. So this is a project called uh, Biologic uh, using uh, uh, bacteria, Bacillus subtrocinatus, as a sensor and actuator to helping uh, breathing. So this is skin, second skin, with millions of living bacteria in each flap. So this is an image from an atomic force microscope because making a board, Arduino, takes a lot of time overnight, but the bacteria grow by itself in a very rapid way. How we can use organic materials as a sensor actuator has been our dream, and uh, we cultivated those materials, but also to make a con accurate printing. We didn't have a printer 2014, so we developed our own printer to for depositing the solution, which in includes certain number of the bacteria in the target area. Then how do you define, decide how many bacteria is needed to where? So we collaborated with the Boston dance company's uh, professional. And we worked together with New Balance to measure her heat map and the sweat map. Then we created a simulation. What's the ventilation of the air may maximize her performance? Each person different one. Then compute, simulate, then decide how much bacteria have to be printed in the certain uh, area, specifically. But the last part is art. So beauty is not the bacteria or 3D printing, but the dancers who are dancing. But she said something very intriguing things. So we had the opportunity to celebrate uh, 30th anniversary of MIT Media Lab. So we came up, uh, uh, Nicholas said bio is a new digital. So I thought bio is a new interface uh, of human machine, uh, to go beyond human machine interface to human living machine interface with environment. Then we did the exhibition. This is a real time change of shape of the biologic uh, film because we are putting a uh, steam to the uh, target materials. And this is a printer that we developed to make an accurate deposition of the liquid which contains. Then this is what nature gave us, is a bacteria. So this is a symbolic mannequin of the human. Now you see the biologic changing shape by the steam, but it's not exciting at all. So the most exciting the professional dancers who are trained really dance in front of uh, everybody enjoying the champagne. But the most important thing, she danced, then she felt the change of the airflow, then she actually changed the way she danced because of the airflow. Then she told me she felt like she's dancing with bacteria. It's so poetic, so beautiful, but you can't write any scientific paper, you can't write any patent, but who cares? So that is, uh, uh, yeah. So I think uh, important thing is uh, we are doing uh, two things, invent. Of course, we are scientists, engineer, designer, we want to invent, but also inspire is so important. Unless you communicate, make a resonance with the heart, mind of the people, you can't make any impact, you can't make any influence. To do so, I have two guiding principles, be artistic, and analytic, be poetic, and pragmatic. So, uh, now I'd like to talk about arts and sciences because 
the name of Da Vinci really inspired a lot. So now, Dr. Xiao Xiao, she used to be the PhD candidate of my group, but she inspired all of us through her amazing project, the Mirror Fugue. One day she saw her reflection to the piano. She's an accomplished pianist, but also hacker, computer scientist. But she now thought she can be in the piano. So now, past Xiao Xiao playing piano, then keyboard moving, but it's very powerful. So now, Xiao Xiao can play with the past of herself, which also led to the uh, crazy vision that uh, this young Xiao Xiao, actually it's my daughter, Arisa. She used to be very cute at the time, but now it's not, uh, anyway, anyway. But <laughs> now she's 18 years old. But it's nice to be four, four years old, it's so cute. So now, Grown up Xiao Xiao with PhD is not playing with young Xiao Xiao. That inspired us. Think about if your grandma used to be the concert pianist, then anniversary day, you can invite her coming from heaven to the grand piano in the living room. Then she can play with grandchildren. Isn't it nice? So that's the origin of the last very, very crazy project called the Teleabsence. So in general, art, science, design, technology have a different uh, like, uh, yeah, things. But how to move this spiral very quickly is very important. But also I like Bruegel's painting of the uh, Tower of the Bubbles. How to really continue this spiral to go to higher and higher, to transcending to the next uh, dimension is something very important. And also you, your institute has the name of Da Vinci's. Also, that's the reason we really have a lot of resonance. So before my life uh, in MIT, I was in a big, gigantic telecommunication industry called NTT, which is a bit like a France Telecom, or British Telecom, or Orange, or whatever. And uh, I did a, a project called uh, uh, Clearboard, first teamwork session. But fundamentally, my interest communication and collaboration. For me, communicating each other is something so fundamentally important through COVID-19 crisis we really miss the chance to communicate. So this is a 30-year-old project called Clearboard. Now you can see young Hiroshi drawing over there. Then uh, I can be seen, but you can see my gaze. You can clearly see where I'm looking at in a big drawing surface. Today, Zoom and the Google Doc in the shared window completely separated. So it's, this is beyond eye contact. Gaze awareness, I know what you're looking at. That's something very, very important to understand interest. So, interestingly, uh, because I st studied uh, this kind of seamless telepresence before my MIT, but I joined MIT, then Nicola said, don't continue. Start completely new stuff, ask, re to ask me to reboot. That's the reason I start tangible bits, but uh, bits, atoms so rigid, so that I decided to go to radical atoms to make atoms dance or fly. But also I have a lot of love to the telepresence. So I continue tangible telepresence. Then COVID-19 crisis hit the entire planet. Then we really understood so important to be connected, to share. Then so many people lost their uh, life. So that's the reason we started uh, thinking about the uh, teleabsence as a final project. As a precursor, there's a system called the InTouch. These are three loader devices, but the over distance, it's synchronized. Also, there's a mathematical spring. If you rotate one roller, then other people also touch, rotate the opposite direction, you feel the force. So this is a distributed, synchronized physical object, illusion. But now you can communicate through the sense of touch. That's something very important called teletangible. But now, given limitation of the Zoom, of the loneliness of the people, I think sense of touch is something important because, you know, COVID, uh, coronavirus hug, you saw this image, really touched many people's hearts. So this tangible telepresence, in touch or in form, really uh, showing about the potential things which missing today. Some people said future of Zoom. That's very nice to hear it. Uh, but I think uh, the real issue is people are very lonely. This planet is lonely planet. People said loneliness is a pandemic. Also, I know some country has a minister for loneliness. I think UK. Anyway, uh, but that's a big issue because some people depressed, also sometimes suicide. So saudade is something very profound uh, concept we learned. It's about the presence of the absence. 
the desire for beloved people, things, or time, or place, but you can't go there. It's gone. It's absence. So it's so painful. So this South Asia, presence of absence, seems something very important uh, things about nostalgia. So people die twice. First, when they die, then when they are forgotten. How to keep remembering? I want to keep remembering you. Also, I'm afraid of being forgotten. This seems something fundamental uh, thing that the people have. So now we are starting about uh, uh, extending the concept of the Shao Shao's mirror field to really keep remembering and also interact, communicate. Not real communication, but uh, now you see late Marvin Minsky actually in the piano. Then before he passed away, he actually did a duet with himself. But now you can really think about it. Then Xiao Xiao had a very close relationship uh, with Professor Marvin Minsky and his family. And also when we did a, a memorial service, actually he, she exhibited these pieces, then everybody cried. So there are so many things, message in the bottles. Also telephone, you can call, then you can hear the humming of loved one of the popular song in the 60s, 70s. And uh, also typewriters, which may type her favorite phrase of the poem in the evening. So there are a lot of things that we can do it. But I think uh, uh, presence of absence, something, something very important. 30 years ago, I did a telepresence. So now I'm really focused, uh, focusing about the uh, teleabsence. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.